The Jeep Wrangler Rubicon was introduced in 2003. It was an absolute revolutionary Jeep. You could go to a dealer, buy a Jeep, and then go onto the hardest trails without doing any modifications. Now this is the third generation Rubicon right here, and we're gonna take it against my first generation Rubicon. Both are stock, and we're gonna see which one performs better on an iconic Moab trail. Hey guys, my name is Dewey Jones. Welcome to Colorado Mall Crawlers where we shoot off-road trail guides. Now I do have a trail guide of fins and things which we're doing today, but this one's more of a comparison between the TJ and the JL. We're doing the southern half. We should be able to see some good stuff and we should be able to do a very good comparison of these two Jeeps. Same driver, same make and model, just years apart now i filmed these about a week apart but they're both filmed with me driving so it should be a pretty fair comparison i'm going to be trying to take the exact same lines and we're just going to see which is the better jeep off-road All right guys, from the trailhead, you go down this little dirt road until you get to the first little obstacle or first rock ledge, and then it is all rocks from there. But right now on the screen is the information about fins and things. This is a fun trail, and we're only doing the southern half today, but I do have a full trail guide of this, so if you like what you see here, check it out, and I'll show you everything you need to know about fins and things. Now guys, this is my 2021 JL Rubicon and I absolutely love it. It's nearly identical to my 2004 TJ Rubicon. Now Jeep Rubicons are factory built off-roaders, meaning they are designed to take on the toughest trails out there. All Jeep Rubicons have factory front and rear lockers, beefier axles, and low gearing. And in this video, we're going to find out if 20 years of development has created a superior off-road Jeep. We're bouncing around right now. Now I do not have the sway bar connected in this Rubicon model, this 2004, and that's because the 2004 did not have an easy way to disconnect the, the sway bar. Now I can disconnect it manually, but we're gonna do this as they came from the factory. I will put eventually quick disconnects on this Jeep, but right now we're gonna do this with the sway bar connected, which will limit this Jeep's articulation, but we'll see how it does, and so far, it's just good to be back on this trail. God, I love this one. All right, guys, one thing I'm noticing is it is so easy with the JL with this front facing camera. Now I'm not very good at using the front facing camera for like actual rock crawling, but you know, just trying to make sure I stay on the trail and don't go off of it is very nice. Cause otherwise like in the TJ, I bet you I got out to check where some of this stuff was. Actually, I know I got out to check it. Hopefully I filmed it and I'm showing it to you right now, but we'll see. But here we're coming across right now the next point in trails off road i've gone both ways but we're going to try this ledge that well you'll see how the tj did see if the JL can do it. I'll try it first without lockers and then I'll use my lockers. And I believe the other trail guide, the one I filmed in the past, went that way. But Trails Off-Road says this is the harder end, so it's potential that the way we went that way doesn't have 
the obstacle that I thought it did. Or maybe this was the obstacle. I just don't know. I might have to go back and look at those, that footage and try to find out what was going on. But here's this little obstacle right now. Alright guys, that little ledge was fun. Now you saw it with the TJ and the JL. Basically, the, the what happened there is the TJ just didn't have the clearance. I don't think I did put the front locker on, but the reason for that is I didn't want to destroy my underside of my brand new, you know, old Jeep. And I really need to see what kind of protection I need to put on it for the type of wheeling I do, because I am trying to save that TJ. And I'm trying to save this JL. I love this JL too. Um, but this JL definitely had the clearance, so I didn't have any problems. Uh, granted that I did need both the front and rear lockers to get up it, but it had the clearance that allowed me to actually be willing to push it a little bit, like you just saw. All right, guys, this little obstacle is not really an obstacle, but it's a descent. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the JL and the TJ side by side so we can see exactly how fast they come down. No gas, no brake, just four wheel drive low and first gear. Right, now it feels like the JL went down that faster than the TJ did, but I really won't know until I look at the footage. So you guys probably know right now, but if my feeling of the JL going down faster is true, I'm guessing it's because that weighs more and it just, uh, you know, had a little bit more trouble kind of keeping it slow down this hill. I mean, it still wasn't fast, but that was a, it felt like a big difference because I was really impressed with the TJ crawling down that. Alright guys, if you're new to the channel, this channel is all about showing you guys trails and actually giving you useful information so that you guys can come out here yourself. We use a whole bunch of variety of vehicles. If you're not a subscriber, we'd love to have you. But right now, I'm working on developing uh, a my vehicles to be useful for these guides. So I'm trying to figure it out. I got this JL Rubicon, I have a TJ Rubicon, and I have a Jeep Liberty. But I love all of these different Jeeps. I really like the stable I have, except I finally am realizing the just empty every pocket thing, because I am going broke trying to get these Jeeps up to, up to stuff, but. Now today's focus is the off-road components of these two vehicles. So that's what we're focusing in on this video, but there's more to what I'm doing. I started out in Grand Junction, filled up both Jeeps completely full at Love's and Grand Junction, and I'm really gonna see how far I can get using these vehicles. Granted, you know, there is some variation, but I'm just wheeling it like I normally wheel you know, and I'm gonna see what the fuel usage is at the end of today. You know, both of them, I went into four wheel drive low at the same time, so we'll see, but that's part of this. In 2024, we are going to be filming multi-day overland guides. So 
comfort is definitely something that belongs in this video. And as they stand right now, the winner is easily the new Jeep. It has heated seats, a tuned suspension, and is just much quieter. Now I could get that TJ new seats, new shocks, and probably a hard top, but I still think that new Jeep will likely ride better. So unfortunately, this is another loss for the old Jeep. The arrows following the tire marks. And we're gonna see what it looks like. It's just absolutely gorgeous though from every angle. One of my first recommendations when you're building an off-road or overland vehicle is to add armor. Now Rubicons come with heavy-duty skid plates and some kind of side protection straight from the factory. Now usually rock rails are better but in the JL's case they are absolute junk. The whole point of rock rails is to prevent body damage and Jeep basically told me the new Rubicons rock rails are not for rocks. So in this category, the TJ wins because those rocker guards on the sides actually do protect the body, and that's a clear win for the old Jeep. All right, guys, now we are approaching waypoint 10. You get this beautiful vista but then you have a steep descent. Now it doesn't look great on camera, but I'm shooting it with the drone to kind of show you it. Now the trail guide, I remember shooting it out there. So you can kind of see a little bit more of the train if you watch that one. Now this is, uh, it's called Pitch. It's number 11 on Trails Off-Roads Guide. And I remember we went to the left it gets you a little bit close to the tree, so that's what we're gonna do again. Now, the width of this Jeep is a little bit more concerning. The TJ, it was no big deal. 18 degrees, 19, 20, 21. This is pitch, 23, 24, 25. About eight, 11, I saw 11 on the roll. But really, no big deal. Just walked right up it just like the TJ did on pitch. So hopefully that came out in the video, just crawling our way up. I think we are heading up to uh, the steep descents where there's three of them, but we'll see in a second. So I am just in first gear, four wheel drive low, and I'm just kinda letting the Jeep go down it, making sure that I am straight down it. All right, guys, as we go down this steep descent, come on, Jeep. Uh, that's a little fast. All right, we are leaving those three Descents. This is descent number two, the easiest. First one is the second hardest. Third one is the hardest over there. But we're just kind of making our way. It's absolutely beautiful today. Hopefully it'll be as beautiful for the JL. All right, now this TJ is absolutely a blast to drive off road now. It's a lot more bouncy than the JL, you know doesn't have the ground clearance that the JL has, but this thing is light, it's fun, and this thing is nimble and can take different lines than what the JL and JK took on these kind of trails. We'll see, you know? As we make our way to a series of mandatory obstacles, let's get into trail fixability. Thankfully, both Jeeps have solid axles, which I find to be very durable and relatively simple to repair on the trail. However, once we move past the suspension, it starts to get more complicated. The JL has way more electronics than the TJ, including a problematic auxiliary battery. 
I won't know till it happens, but the TJ should be easier to repair on the trail, giving it another win. steep descent. We're getting into golden hour now. I'm gonna continue on. I'm definitely liking how the TJ's doing. We are almost at the most challenging test, the wall. But before we do, let's talk about value. Now you can get a TJ Rubicon for ten to $15,000, and they're usually cheaper to fix as well as build. Now JL Rubicons have ballooned in price, and I believe my JL was $55,000. However, the JL does come with a warranty, and I do find that valuable as long as FCA continues to honor it. So I'm gonna call this a tie, but if I really had to pick one, I'd probably lean towards the TJ. Yeah, well, the wall, you guys just saw it. Now, I gotta say, it was a ton of fun in the TJ. Well, that was fun. Now, I couldn't get up it without my lockers unless I really gassed it, but this is not about pushing the vehicle. It's about seeing the capabilities of the two vehicles. And it was still fun in the JL, but the JL just walked up it, which kind of ruins some of the fun that you can have on that. But the TJ had to work it a little bit. So, you know, no lockers with the JL. I think I had a rear locker on with the TJ, but you guys are the ones that have just seen the footage, so you actually know, but hopefully it was entertaining. Yeah. Hope that was recording. All right, guys, I'm going to show you the rest of this iconic trail. But first, we need to take a step back and go over the results of this, this comparison between the TJ and the JL. Now, I absolutely believe that this new Jeep was going to run away with this competition. I wasn't in the minority either. I asked both TJ and JL owners what they thought, and the majority of people thought the JL would blow away the old Jeep. It's had 20 years of development. It's also way more expensive than an old Rubicon was at the time that the old Rubicon was new. So you would think all that money would go into just making a superior off-road Jeep because that is what the Rubicon was. We'll start off with traction. That was the last thing we tested and I gave that to the JL because it was able to walk up that without using the lockers. The TJ only used the rear locker and it made easy work of that wall obstacle. 
Now in reality, I don't know if I should have called it that way because the TJ came standard with lockers. It used those lockers to do it. The challenge wasn't enough to actually differentiate between the two Jeeps. Now we get to the biggest loss by the TJ and that was in that ground clearance category. The new Jeep has improved on all the off-road numbers over the old TJ in every way. But what I'm surprised by is that the new Jeep only has 10.8 inches of ground clearance, where the old Jeep had 10.2 inches of ground clearance, but the old Jeep did that with 30.5 inch tires. The new Jeep requires 33 inch tires. To me, that almost seems like a loss for the JL again, even though it did win it. But just imagine if I put 33 inch tires on that TJ. The TJ, that was its sole focus was to be an off-road Jeep and by doing that Jeep sold so many of them it is why the Rubicon is a legend is because Jeep focused on off-road capability I absolutely love wheeling both of these Jeeps I have fun in this one I have fun in the TJ but I think the fact that I sometimes have to use lockers in the TJ makes it a little bit more fun for me. And I'm excited to see how that evolves throughout this year. And speaking of this year, I'm really excited. We are gonna be doing multi-day overland trips, so I'm gonna get a ton of time in both Jeeps. I also would love to have you guys out there with me and we're doing that through memberships, but you don't need to join our memberships because we are gonna be bringing you all this trail information on this channel. Now, I normally don't ask this, but I would love a subscription because I am in a competition with my buddy and I have to buy him beer or steaks if I lose it. So I'm really hoping I don't lose this bet. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see the JL's most brutal trail, click over there. And if you want to see the TJ's first shakedown run, click up there. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.